in this video we'll talk about path operations before we talk about that let me say a few more things about a uh, few things about this layers very simple use of layers if you go to layer and layers you will have this layer dialog box and there you can add more layers using these buttons and you can change the order of these layers so I'm going to go to the layer one and uh, these uh, eye pictures and by clicking on that whatever is on layer three can be hidden and the layer two by clicking on that you can see those contents were in layer two and if you click on uh, this eye of layer one the path operation is gone so that path operation is written in layer one and by clicking on this lock button you can unlock it and you can move it move these things around but if you lock that layer by clicking on that you can't do anything it's locked to that position won't be able to do anything about it the so same thing layer two um, let me make it visible and here I listed the examples that we're going to go through in this video and this is purely for display purpose so whenever I'm clicking on here and there I do not want this to be moved around or selected so I locked it but if you unlock it and go to layer 3 and position in layer 3 so you're in layer 3 edit mode but you can still select what's in layer 2 because it's unlocked by clicking on that it automatically switches to layer 2 so if you lock it and go to layer 3 if you click on that any of these things that is still visible from layer 2 won't be able to select anything you're in this layer th 3 so I'm going to make it um, invisible and use this space to do each of these um, path operations where we'll begin with the operation union that's over here my intention is to create this um, bullet image in here so I'm going to make it invisible and uh, we're still in layer 3 and we're going to begin with this um, rectangular box I'm going to do this horizontally just about here that's going to be the bullet shell and I'm going to use this um, ellipse tool so make it somewhere just about here roughly and then I'm going to stretch it after this is positioned correctly go to the selection mode by clicking S and we're going to kind of uh, center this one exactly in the middle of vertically for that we go to object and align distribute and over here I'm going to select these two object and kind of align it vertically um, the same location and always be um, sensitive to aware of this relative to position it's at last selected here is not that important so I selected this one first second I selected this one using shift key so this one is the last selected too so this is not going to move this part will move to center it in here so this seems like um, the vertical alignment by clicking on that it slightly adjusted it so go ahead and select this one in here hold the control key and move it over here kind of put it into the center position right there then this part as we take the union this part will be the bullet part so um, I'm going to stretch it a little bit uh, holding um, using this one it only protrudes like this so this is not what we want um, so we want it to center this one and so you, you so you hold I think it has to be the object I was wrong if you do the control key the everything will get bigger so I'm going to actually make that a little bit bigger um, I think this is all right a little bit bigger than that I'm going to re-select um, align it here maybe that's a bit, a bit better and then select this ellipse tool and go to object object not the I was wrong the object here ellipse and make this one a little bit bigger this one bigger like that then it's going to be centered and the stretch horizontally so I think maybe that's sufficient like that so this is object and both are object 
but uh, you can still do this path operation without converting it to pathos it will automatically convert to path so if you take that and this one together using shift key and go to path and if you take the union and it's like a union of uh, two two sets subsets in the xy plane mathematically so that's the same thing if you take that it'll create that the bullet shape there so now this is not an object it automatically switched to path if you look at the nodes you can see all the nodes in there so I'm going to um, rotate counterclockwise make it look like a more like the bullet shape in there and then we can fill in the color a little bit darker like that to create a little edge you can do a little more such as um, you can create um, right now I hope you can see that as you locate your pen tool I chose a pen tool and it automatically locked to one of the corner in here that one is called um, snapping if you look at somewhere in your program you can see the snapping button there's a various different options of snapping this is very very convenient if you have to do with a precision um, drawing or location but sometimes it's um, annoying you want to go actually here not snap to this corner then you can turn that off there's a button you can turn off all the snapping and then you can actually put um, this line I'm about to sketch a line if you want to do it exactly horizontal then you can hold the control key and then you can go in and click on somewhere here like that and you can adjust it a little bit um, make it again you hold a control key to make it look like this a little bit like that this already looks like a little bit of a boundary in there and you can do a little bit more of a um, little bit of a glare in here using these um, these type of tool to so somewhere about there um, let me go ahead and use different um, stroke so that I can color that different I think it's okay so maybe I can go ahead and do things like that I'm going to change that color to the lot brighter color um, using shift uh, this color key in there it's a lot brighter and then choose this nodal key um, and then bend it a little bit and make sure it doesn't have a fill color by clicking on that X then you created a little bit of that glare over there by bending it um, using this nodal key just grab anywhere um, and you can bend it and if it is too small you can zoom in and by clicking on number three kind of you can adjust it a little bit and make it more, more look more like uh, is uh, close to this boundary edge in there now select and uh, zoom out by clicking on one that looks like a uh, bullet shape and then you can select everyone and do control G to group it then everything is grouped together and it's going to move around and make it a little bit smaller like that to make it look like a bullet shape so that's one example of union so let's take a look at the next one next one we're doing is the difference the order of this one is important here so make sure pay attention to that so let's go to um, layer three so I'm going to choose uh, this ellipse shape and hold the control key to make a perfect circle and I'm going to use this black um, stroke so shift black in here and then I'm going to fill in with a little gray color in there like let's say it's a 30 percent just click without a shift key and then you have this set so I want you to think of this set a so that goes to the bottom think about the mathematical operation the subset of a in the xy plane minus subset of b so a goes to under so I'm going to go ahead and create another circle actually by duplicating it so if I click on that object a and duplicate control D that it's on this object and this is a object not a path but this um, dynamic offset will still work I think so if you do that it does unique operation it is kind of shrink it in, in toward inside or outside 
So if it is too complicated, sometimes it does a weird thing, but there's only one node in here by clicking toward inside, it creates a um, kind of scaled down object of this one toward to the center. So I'm going to make it look like that. So this is going to be set B. So set B is on top. Let me go ahead and choose a different color, like a blue one with a little bit lighter color so that I can distinguish it. That is on top. A is in the bottom in terms of the order. B is in the top. So if you do operation, if you want to do operation A minus B, so that B is removed from the A, A must be in the bottom. That's the thing that you have to remember. So you select A and select B that is on top of it. And if you go to path, if you take the difference, it will remove that B from A. And you can think about it if you're just over here, it does a similar thing. So that created a donut shape. Just for fun, this would be probably something that you might be using in the mathematical instruction and presentation. And then if you go to um, this um, layer two, as you can see I have a little a chip off shape in there. Just for fun, we're going to do that. So I'm going to create um, another circle in there and create another circle like this. I'm going to um, take the union of these two things then it changes to um, path again so this is already in the bottom it's already in the top if you move it over here you can see that, that this one is in the top so if you want to do the difference this one minus that this has to be on the top you can imagine if you you know remove that there's a little chip off effect in there so you take that detect the second one and go to path you take the difference and then you have a little chip off shape. So altogether, this is no longer an object, it automatically changes the path and you can see all these paths. So this is um, an example of using path difference. All these things are very, very useful to create um, all this different type of a sh different type of shapes. Right, next one is intersection. We will use this chipped off the donut shape and add this little bit of a glare and um, into this part. That's what we're going to do. Let's hide this layer two, come back to layer three. We still have this one over here. So um, here's a little technique. I'm going to go ahead and do the control D by duplicate. So same thing is created on top of it. Go back there and I'm going to kind of shrink this one to the inside and um, this can be done using this path and dynamic offset so it is a dynamic version of inset and outset dynamic offset then there's one node by making um, dragging this one node outside it's going to try to make it bigger something crazy is happening onto this part in here don't worry about it we're only going to use this one in here to make it inset kind of goes into this center part in there so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller in there like this much about that and I'm going to change that color to the bright white and without any stroke so shift X in there so that's that part if it looks too big maybe you can make it a little bit thinner like this so that goes in there so all we have to do now I'm going to make it a little bit darker so that I can show you and this thing in there, I'm going to select uh, that selection mode, pull it out. Did it wrong? I have to select this one inside. Um, do it again, that one there. Then uh, you can see that uh, the duplicated, co duplicated copy was shrunk into that part. So put it back into that position. So next thing is uh, intersection. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to pull that once out again. Uh, you can see this object and I'm going to draw a little triangle in here and cut out, cut only this part in here. That will be intersection. So go back and think about this gray object and I go there and use this pen tool, Bezier curve, and go to the center, click and release, draw a triangle just about that much and go back in and here and um, click on that. Then this, uh, let me go to do the stroke and remove the interior. 
then this is actually a path with this enclosed uh, empty fill and we, I'm going to select this inner ring and if you think about intersection if this is um, um, we're count if we're counting an interior the intersection will be this this path region versus that one the intersection will be this middle one in here and that's the glare I'm creating if you think about intersection the order is not important so you don't have to think about which one is on top and which one's the bottom when you're doing the intersection so this one and shift click and you can select both of them and go to object and actually path and there's intersection and it'll take that intersection in there you can change it to bright color so that's the glare so go ahead and choose entire thing and control group so that's going to be one object now you can make it a little bit smaller in there if you think this is just too bright and you can go ahead and select that glare part only by doing this control select and uh, it doesn't break the group but it allows you to still edit that part so that's a bright color you can go ahead and dim that a little bit if it is a too dim maybe that's sufficient enough so click off then if you click here again this is still in the group so this is a very very convenient feature control click then you can do these uh, individual edit so that is an example of intersection let's take a look at the next one right the next item is a cutting path so go to layer 3 and I'm going to draw this tetrahedron go to this um, bezier curve and click and release and click and release and draw this triangle um, close it up here that will be the one face of tetrahedron and my snapping is on so if I place my cursor over there you can see the snap to that position it's very very convenient so over here and close it here by double clicking it I'm going to go to the selection tool I hope you see that this is a one path that's another one so it's a two separate path it is not one path but they kind of joined like that but it's not combined so that's that I, this looks a bit weird so go to nodal by nodal mode there by n clicking on n I'm going to adjust this one a little bit uh, like that so that it looks more like a, a tetrahedron in a better shape this one as well next thing I'm going to do is this line on the other side so by clicking on this pen tool snapping there snapping there by double click and select um, click s the selection mode um, just make sure I'm going to put this one in the all the way the bottom because you know that's supposed to be on the other side so I'm going to click on that at the bottom so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and show you by double uh, control D I'm going to just show you the example what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a little box around it here and that will be a one path and I'm going to um, execute that that um, cut path operation so this is in the bottom this I just created so this must be on top you can just go and fill that color you can see this is above that line so unfill that color in there so choose that path and choose this path the bottom one there is actually a stroke so this is actually applied to the stroke so think about it path intersection difference between this cut path and we're cutting actually stroke that's probably a better term so we're going to uh, able to cut this bottom straight line stroke into three pieces I think so go to the path and cut path is what we're doing and as you can see it divided into th uh, three different pieces so if you go and select the middle one you can actually cut this path in three pieces so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to cut this little bit of a part of the back one there so that it kind of jumps and then it gives a little bit of impression that, that this is behind the hidden that kind of effect this is very useful I do that all the time when I draw things on the board um, teaching um, calculus and stuff so I'm going to select that one in there so I'm going to draw a little box around it but I thought 
if it is a parallel to this line, that will be better. That doesn't make much difference for the cut path you will see later. But and I'll do that to my best. So I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, you know, this much of a parallel line. This part is, doesn't matter. It only counts about um, this parallel part in there. And it close up. So that's the path. So make sure that it's kind of centered around that. So I can do this control shift and then rescale it to make it actually small like that so that only small portion is cut out. So you choose the bottom one and these, um, this one in there. So in, this time the order is important. Whatever that's supposed to remain, you have to put in the bottom and there's the cutting shape. It must be in the top order. So go to path and do the cut path. It's supposed to divide in three pieces. It's kind of difficult to select that little one. You have to use Alt key. Go ahead and select it, click, and usually it, it'll select the big triangle. Do not move your cursor, but hold Alt key and click one more time. And one more time there until you get to that little part. It is selected and you can delete that using the delete key. Now you create a little um, little space in there. So this is one way to create a little bit of a you know 3D effect and um, if it is actually solid apart and we can also go ahead and choose this one and change the stroke style to the dashed uh, line something like that. So it's a dotted line and this is another technique um, it's very useful. Click on that and control copy and click on the other one and go to edit and do not paste it, but paste the style. Then it'll paste all the style, which includes this dashed line. So if you click on that, it'll change to that dashed line. So that completely remove um, the, the cut part we did, but it's still making sure that the little dotted line doesn't go over, um, you know, cross that. Uh, this one is supposed to be the closest segment to to us. So the final bit is that go ahead and choose this one even though it only has two sides it's tr still going to create an interior region. So go ahead and fill in with this color a little bit and then um, it kind of creates this shade and we want to create the opacity so that you can see through. So go to fill in stroke um, kind of choose the half of uh, or one third of opacity in there somewhere there and you create that. And also it's kind of because this is a um, top higher order than this one. So if you put this one into the top, this stroke will come above this uh, shaded region. I think that's better. And there's a slight difference, but it makes a difference. So you can use this idea to create a cube and all that. Um, it's a little bit more work than this tetrahedron, but you can group this one and uh, create um, this type of shape. So one more thing, if you go and click on that, whole thing to click, but I'm gonna, I did not, did not like that little two pointy edge in there. So let me go ahead and make, uh, make a little bit bigger. See there's a two pointy up there. So if you wanna change, you can select this triangle part by uh, doing this control a click. You selected that. And if you go to fill and stroke, there's this join part and you can make it sharp like this, but you can make it smooth. If you change to that, it kind of takes care that it's a little smoother in there. It's a little difference, but it uh, sometimes it, uh, it matters to, all right, so make it small like that. So that's the tetrahedron you can create. So for that, I use this idea of a cut path. Actually, uh, let me show you another example of cut path, and this uh, is this one here. And you can imagine you can actually create this um, cut path technique to, to get this one. But you have to cut the path over here to create that. So let me go ahead and hide this one and go to layer 3 and copy and paste and show you um, about this thing in here. So. What I did for that one, and there, there's one thing different in here. What I wanted to show in here, if you zoom in, and if, if this has happened to be thicker, 
and if you don't like the, the angle of this cut path in here this is kind of perpendicular to the you know tangent line of this last bit of the stroke but if you want to make this one more to you know kind of parallel to the other part of the line and um, I suggest you do the following the basically you have to turn this one into a path then you can control that if, if it remains as a stroke and if you cut it it'll cut it always in the 90 degree perpendicular edge in there this doesn't matter if your stroke is really thin we're not going to detect that and anything strange but if it is a thicker then this one for example then this one matters for example I'm going to make this thickness a little bit thicker and that's less like it's a 10 then if this cut direction is a little bit uh, not really what you want you're going to do the following all right so go to the first I'm going to create this path like this so create this uh, velocity vector create another one in there and close up like this double click and then I'm going to unfill this one actually that and keeping the opacity all the way up so that's a one path and um, to do the cut um, it's difficult to cut just the bottom part in here so the idea is that you have to break this one into a two path so I'm going to cut it here but I'm not going to really separate it so it just looks connected then we recognize this as a different path and then I can only cut up like this right now it's a single path when you cut it it'll cut all of these intersection part so go to select and go to nodal mode and create another node there by double clicking on that and this node is selected now and go to this um, node at add addition mode and you can break that node into two part so if you click on that it's actually um, broken apart in there but uh, we'll keep it there and if you click on this one in here and go to path and break apart and it'll separate into two different paths so what we're going to cut is this path and underneath it so now um, we're going to do only to that operation only to that path and we have to create this cut shape go to um, the pen mode and kind of make it to parallel to that direction to that one in there well, actually before I do that the whole point is that we're actually cutting this one as a path not as a stroke we already did that if you do the stroke you're going to have this type of perpendicular uh, shape so we wanted to avoid that so we're going to select all that and turn everything into that was a stroke right now I'm going to turn it into a path so if you click on that path if you click on this one in here if you click on the nodal mode you can see this is a path now so if you cut it like this and it'll take that cut so now we create this cut shape um, try to make it perpendicular to this one in here try to make it it's um, kind of centered into that shape so that's that make a let's make it a little bit thick thinner than that it's just a five point in there so try to center that into that position and hold a control key and shift and try to make that much of a cut so it's going to cut off the, the second one again this is not stroke um, this is a path and it, and then you select the second one in there which is on top order here is important when you're doing this um, cut in here so this part is no longer cut path we're doing this um, what is it path and then we're removing this part if you think about it the difference is the right one right so you have to do the difference if you do the difference you remove that part in there so that's a path now you select the whole thing and control G and then it's a one on thing in there now if you zoom in you kind of have that direction in there this is a very small thing but as you use more and more and staring at it if you compare with that one that looks kind of odd it looks better if you think about it it's um, you get uh, more sensitive to this type of things so let's get to the next one I realize there's another good example of cut path versus uh, difference between the paths so if you want to embed this nice thick 
you know, line inside this trying um, a rectangle in here. There are two things. I did this cut path technique and in here, as you can see, if you zoom in, there's this kind of, this angle you cannot avoid is always perpendicular to this direction of um, your stroke. So the end will be a little bit unclear. But if you use, um, turn the stroke into a path, and then if you do the difference, the end is perfect. And in here, as you can see, um, it's perfectly respect to this boundary shape in there. So that's another use of uh, difference um, using the path difference. And but sometimes if it is a thin, and the cut path is very convenient. Next thing is division. So let's hide this one and cover that one. And this um, this is a good spot. Um, this is uh, the, the layer one is locked. Layer two is invisible. And layer three is this one. And I want to erase that. And you have to go to the selection mode. And there is this nice command in here. Select all object in all the visible and unlocked layer. So by doing that, it's going to select everything that is on layer three. It's a visible and not locked. So you can easily delete this thing in there. Now we're here. So I'm going to create this perfect circle. And I'm going to fill this with a light color like that. All right, we have uh, this thing. And we wanted to divide this one into different pieces, three, di uh, three pieces. So which I um, did it using this Bezier curve. And you create this type of uh, quadrilateral shape in there. Click on that. And let me remove the fill. Then we have this shape. Again, this is generated later. So this is the bottom. And this is the top. Just like the difference between the path, what is being operated is this one. And this is the kind of operator. So after that, this it will remain divided into pieces. So if you do the division, it'll um, kind of divide uh, the circular shape into three pieces divided by this shape in there. So go to and select this one as well and go to path. And if you do the division, it is divided into three pieces. And if you select that, the middle part is a selected, things like that. So sometimes it's useful um, to create various dynamic things that you sometimes do in math instruction class or um, in a presentation. It's too thick, so I'm going to just do two, two, uh, two points like that. So that, that's um, how you divide it up. This could be useful as well. The last thing I want to cover here is this bucket fill command. It's down here after this, um, pretty much toward the bottom of the left and uh, left side panel. So if you click on that and choose a color such as like uh, the gray one like this, and uh, it'll try to find enclosed area. So if I drop it in here, it'll try to find enclosed area because there's an opening in here. It'll go through and try to fill in all the colors. It's very, very useful. Otherwise, you have to do control, um, the duplicate, and then reshape it and things like that. It's very, very useful. So if you drop that color over there, it'll try to color um, in that. It also did the stroke. So try to it, it try to avoid that stroke around that so if you remove that stroke by shift x in there it'll remove the stroke it'll try to kind of um, you know try to fill in as much as it can so you can change that color this is an um, separate object um, the path in and here as you can see it created this uh, um, this type of a fill area so go back in there and try to um, use a lighter color, I think it's more natural. There's no kind of conflict between this edge and this color in there. So this is very useful. And uh, try to make it small like that. And as you can see, it's pretty good. Um, also, if you want to make it a little bit, you know, thicker and fattened, let me go ahead and make it bigger in there. And you can select that and you can use this path and dynamic offset to make it slightly bigger to to fill up you know a little bit or a little bit smaller things like that this dynamic offset is often very very useful and um, 
So we go ahead and make it small. Let's see how this one looks like. That might be better, maybe not. I'm gonna, you know, but uh, just wanted to add this uh, possibility in there whenever you do this path operation. All right, I think that concludes our video about the path operations. I'll see you in the next one.